Toyota's CEO recently stirred up controversy by issuing a surprising cautionary statement that ruffled feathers among EV manufacturers while eliciting excitement from combustion car enthusiasts. The newly appointed CEO, Koji, appears to hold a strong aversion to EVs and is staunchly opposed to the idea of transitioning entirely to electric vehicles. However, despite this apparent stance, Toyota has begun to actively promote EVs. This apparent contradiction begs the question, why the sudden shift in strategy? It seems that external pressures from global leaders are compelling Toyota to embrace EVs reluctantly. Behind the scenes though, Toyota has been quietly exploring a groundbreaking alternative fuel that could potentially disrupt the entire EV movement and safeguard the future of combustion engines. So why the CEO's skepticism towards EVs? What are the undisclosed aspects of electrification that the world doesn't want you to know? And when can we expect this new alternative fuel to debut? The story traces back to the era of Toyota's former CEO Akio Toyota, who was ousted due to his reluctance to adopt EV technology. But why would the head of one of the world's largest automakers oppose a trend that many deem inevitable? Toyota's stance under Akio Toyota's leadership was proactive, positioning themselves as part of a silent majority within the auto industry, skeptical of an EV exclusive future. He advocated for a holistic approach, endorsing various powertrain technologies, including hybrids, plug-in hybrids, hydrogen-powered vehicles, Toyota's secret fuel, and yes, even battery electric vehicles. In his own words, Akio Toyota emphasized the importance of exploring multiple avenues rather than committing solely to EVs. He voiced concerns shared by many in the industry, suggesting that while EVs were seen as the front runner for carbon neutrality, the real adversary was carbon emissions themselves, regardless of the powertrain type. In essence, as articulated by Toyota's former CEO, the prevailing sentiment among industry insiders is a caution against narrowing our options prematurely. While EVs may seem like the dominant trend, there's a silent majority within the auto industry advocating for a more diversified approach. Ultimately, the goal is not to limit ourselves to one solution, but to address the larger issue of carbon emissions through a variety of technological advancements. Amidst the buzz, the new CEO sent shockwaves with a dire warning to world leaders regarding the ramifications of banning internal combustion engine cars. But let's delve deeper into Toyota's stance. Battery electric vehicles weren't seen as the sole answer to achieving carbon neutrality targets. Instead, the CEO advocated for a mix of technologies, including hybrids, plug-ins, BEVs, and fuel cell vehicles. Sure, there might be a personal attachment, considering his lifelong involvement with combustion engines. However, his concerns were practical. Toyota wasn't alone in this view. They had the support of several major automakers. The CEO foresaw potential crises due to looming shortages of vital materials like lithium and battery-grade nickel, which could disrupt supply chains in the coming years. Moreover, he questioned the feasibility of regulators' expectations regarding the rapid adoption of electric vehicles. Toyota wasn't completely averse to electric vehicles under his leadership. They allocated a significant $70 billion to towards electrified vehicles over nine years, although this figure paled in comparison to some rivals. The company's strategy was clear, diversify. They aimed to offer a wide array of powertrains to cater to diverse customer preferences. Unfortunately, this forward-thinking CEO Akio Toyota was removed from his position due to his concerns about electrification. He wasn't just a CEO, he embodied the essence of Toyota's philosophy. He advocated for allowing consumers to make their own choices rather than imposing EVs on everyone. However, Toyota's stance led to them being labeled as one of the most obstructive companies globally in 2022, alongside oil giants like ExxonMobil. Adding to the scrutiny, Toyota's first EV, the BZ4X, faced safety recalls upon launch. Despite boasting double-digit EV sales figures, Toyota's share of zero-emission vehicle sales in the US remained below 1%, with only around 1,200 units sold initially. The former CEO openly admitted his reluctance towards digitalization, electric vehicles, and connected cars, citing his deep-rooted passion for traditional automotive engineering as his limitation. Enter Koji Sato, who was expected to steer Toyota towards an all-electric future. However, shortly after assuming office, Sato surprised many by declaring Toyota's dual focus on their new fuel source, details of which we'll delve into shortly. At Toyota's annual general meeting, shareholders pressured the company for a more aggressive EV strategy. Despite this, Toyota remained steadfast 
steadfast in its commitment to carbon neutrality rather than solely promoting EV adoption. Executive Vice President Masahiko Maeda reiterated Toyota's dedication to offering various vehicle options. Despite pushback from European investors and American hedge funds, Toyota stood firm. Notably, a Danish fund voiced concerns over Toyota's climate lobbying practices, accusing the company of hindering efforts to phase out combustion engines in favour of EVs. Other significant players like AP7, the store brand group and the Church of England shareholders raised similar concerns. Environmentalists and the general public have become increasingly vocal about their dissatisfaction, notably at Toyota's headquarters, where Greenpeace Japan organised a protest urging a halt to fossil fuel car production. Toyota's reputation in environmental circles suffered a blow, receiving Greenpeace's lowest grade in their 2021 analysis of global automakers' decarbonisation efforts. Despite setting a target to sell 3.5 million battery EVs annually by 2030, Toyota still trails behind its competitors in terms of the proportion of total sales represented by EVs. While Toyota's leadership has remained consistent in its approach to the EV transition, it faces both internal and external external pressures. It's important to note that Toyota is not alone in its stance against EVs. Companies like Stellantis, BMW, Porsche, Honda and Mercedes share similar sentiments. BMW CEO Zipa warned against solely focusing on EVs, highlighting the risk of increased dependency on a few countries for raw materials, particularly China. He stressed the continued relevance of combustion engine cars for individuals unable to transition immediately. Carlos Tavares, head of Stellantis and Jeep, also cautioned against dogmatic bans on combustion vehicles, citing potential unmanageable social consequences. Transitioning solely to EVs, which are currently more expensive than fossil fuel or hybrid counterparts, could render car ownership unaffordable for many, particularly impacting the middle class. Honda's CEO, having decades of experience in engine development, acknowledged the personal apprehension towards the transition. However, he emphasized the importance of making decisions based on what's best for the business. Now, on to the game changer, Toyota's Ammonia engine. Yes, you read that correctly. Developed in collaboration with GAC Motors, this engine addresses all the drawbacks of traditional combustion engines. The best part? It's compatible with existing ICE cars, meaning you can hold on to your vehicle for longer without worrying about government bans. Composed of one nitrogen and three hydrogen molecules, Ammonia offers an exciting prospect for internal combustion engines. With no carbon atoms in its structure, it inherently promises low CO two emissions when burned. GX prototype, co-developed with Toyota, can run on liquidized ammonia, a feat previously limited to ships and heavy machinery. The revelation that a two L4 cylinder engine could produce 161 horsepower with 90% fewer carbon emissions is truly groundbreaking. This concept has the potential to reshape the automotive industry with its reduced emissions. To dive deeper into this revolutionary engine, we've produced a dedicated video covering all its features. You can find the link at the end of this video for your convenience. In addition to this innovative engine, Toyota has recently initiated testing of a vehicle that garnered significant attention globally. At a recent endurance race at Suzuka Circuit, Japan, Toyota's new CEO, Kisato, shared the company's stance on electric vehicles and hydrogen cars. While acknowledging the importance of an EV-first mindset, he also stressed the significance of keeping hydrogen as a viable option for the future. Kisato indicated that for hydrogen to play a significant role, there needs to be an evolution in its production and transport supply chain. While Toyota is undoubtedly making strides towards EVs, with plans for a new dedicated EV platform by 2026 and aiming to sell about 3.5 million EVs worldwide by 2030, it remains committed to exploring all avenues, including hydrogen, for a sustainable automotive future. They're also keeping hydrogen in their sights. Sato's remarks suggest that Toyota wants to be ready for any future energy scenarios. In line with this, they're currently testing new hydrogen racing fuel cells that promise both efficiency and power. Toyota recently introduced a Corolla powered by liquid hydrogen, marking the entry of hydrogen-fueled vehicles into the auto racing scene. The hydrogen-powered Corolla took part in the Super Taikyu 24-hour race at Fuji Speedway, underscoring Toyota's dedication to green technology. While the race car serves more as an experiment than a commercial product at this stage, it represents a significant step forward. Unlike conventional EVs, 
the hydrogen Corolla utilizes a combustion engine that burns liquid hydrogen instead of gasoline. Despite facing criticism for their gradual approach to electrification, Toyota's newly unveiled roadmap is ambitious. They envision EVs with an impressive range of over 600 miles by 2026 increasing to around 900 miles post-2028. The first of these next-gen EVs will debut under their luxury brand, Lexus, leveraging cutting-edge lithium-ion battery technology. Toyota's future plans also include the implementation of gigacasting technologies for faster vehicle production and the pursuit of ultra-aerodynamic car designs. While their focus on electric and hydrogen technologies is evident, Toyota isn't abandoning internal combustion engines. They intend to continue their development efforts, ensuring a diverse range of options for consumers worldwide. Now, the question is, should Toyota completely abandon combustion engines or do you stand with them in their quest to find alternative solutions to the energy crisis. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Stellantis, the massive conglomerate housing 12 auto giants like Ram, Chrysler and Dodge, recently stirred up controversy with a bombshell dropped by its CEO, Carlos Tavares. In a stark warning at the inaugural Freedom of Mobility Forum, Tavares cast doubt on the electric vehicle revolution, leaving many in the industry perturbed. The crux of Tavares's message is that while gas-powered cars face impending bans, EVs might not be the panacea they're touted to be. Tavares highlighted a looming challenge, the scarcity of resources like lithium, crucial for EV batteries. This scarcity threatens to derail the ambitious plan to replace a staggering three billion internal combustion engine vehicles worldwide. Stellantis, cognizant of the shifting automotive landscape, has committed a staggering $35.5 billion investment in plug-in models by 2025. However, Tavares's warning underscores the monumental hurdles ahead. With over 1.3 billion gas-powered cars currently on the roads, the transition to EVs isn't merely daunting. It could be nigh impossible due to resource limitations. Tavares's remarks have ignited a debate on the feasibility and sustainability of the EV agenda. As governments worldwide enforce bans on combustion engines, questions about the availability of resources and the viability of mass EVs adoption loom large. Stellantis's stance challenges the prevailing narrative, prompting a re-evaluation of the future of mobility. Stellantis isn't just making big moves in the EV scene. They've even teamed up with Samsung to build their first EV battery factory. But amidst all these ambitious plans, lies a troubling assumption that there will be enough raw materials to go around. Elon Musk and Rivian's RJ Scaring have already sounded the alarm about the looming scarcity of essential materials like lithium, nickel, graphite, and cobalt. Sure, technically speaking, the world might have sufficient resources, but getting them out of the ground is no walk in the park. It's a bureaucratic and logistical nightmare, tangled in red tape and geopolitical tensions. Even if we have the lithium, setting up a new mine could take up to a decade. Carlos Tavares isn't pulling any punches either. He warns that the proposed combustion ban by the European Union could have unintended consequences, potentially leading to increased greenhouse gas emissions. Why? Because we might not have enough lithium to responsibly allocate to EV production. Germany seems to be taking heed. They recently voted down the combustion ban, arguing for allowances for future green fuels. If Europe and certain US states go ahead with combustion engine bans, EVs already 40% pricier than their gas counterparts could become even more expensive. Mercedes-Benz CEO echoes these concerns, cautioning that without a robust supply chain, increasing EV production could further drive up costs. So, what's the solution? Tavares suggests mandating that every new vehicle have a range of at least 30 to 50 miles with zero emissions. It could be a more practical and cost-effective approach, especially considering that the majority of trips are under 30 miles. Known for his blunt style, Tavares didn't mince words when he asserted that we're not quite there yet regarding range. To eliminate range anxiety, EVs would need to cover 400 miles on a single charge. But that wasn't the only bombshell he dropped. Tavares disclosed that producing electric vehicles costs a whopping 40% more than making internal combustion cars. What's particularly concerning is his acknowledgement that passing on these costs to consumers would risk losing half of their customer base. 
Essentially, Tavares is cautioning that the dream of affordable EVs for the average buyer might be just that, a dream. Adding to the complexity, Tavares scrutinized the weight of EVs. Achieving a 400-mile range would add a hefty 1,000 pounds compared to similar gas-powered vehicles, a weight that's simply unsustainable. While acknowledging the regulatory pressure favoring EVs, Tavares proposed an alternative solution. He suggested replacing older vehicles with modern equivalents, potentially featuring mild hybrid technology. This, he argued, could offer a more practical and cost-effective approach, leading to a swift 50% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions on average. Tavares isn't just critiquing EV challenges, he's also vocal about what he sees as the politicization of climate change policies. He cautioned against using these policies as tools for competitive advantage in global trade, especially as countries like the US and China offer hefty subsidies to promote clean technologies and EVs. Tavares is raising a crucial concern. Are we unwittingly triggering a global trade dispute in the guise of fighting climate change? It's not just speculation. It's a warning sign that could signal the downfall of the EV dream, a dream sold to us as the solution to our environmental challenges. The skepticism of Stellantis' CEO is mirrored by the struggles of other automakers like General Motors, Ford, Hyundai, and Rivian. They're all wrestling with the soaring costs of battery materials. Moreover, the new EV tax credit rules mandating battery production in North America or allied countries have thrown a spanner in the works for many automakers. It's as if the industry is standing on shaky ground, propped up by policies that sow division rather than unity and destruction rather than progress. Tavares has been vocal about the risk of pricing the middle class out of the EV market if automakers can't absorb the added production costs. He believes that affordable EVs should ideally be priced around $25,000. But if subsidies are the only way to keep EVs within reach, what happens when those subsidies inevitably diminish? The middle class could find themselves not just priced out of new cars, but potentially shut out of personal mobility altogether. Despite Stellantis having the least aggressive electrification strategy among Detroit's big three, it's still in a precarious position. Even its flagship electric pickup, the Ram 1500 EV, is expected to come with a gasoline range extender underscoring the company's struggle to fully embrace electrification. While the average cost of EV batteries has plummeted by 80%, the starting prices of EVs remain high. Jeep, a brand synonymous with rugged off-road vehicles, hasn't been immune to these market forces. Despite its push for electrification with models like the Wrangler and Grand Cherokee 4 XE plug-in hybrids, Jeep has faced declining sales and a tarnished brand image. In the first quarter of 2023, Jeep sales were down nearly 20%, with Ram truck sales following suit with a 17% decline. Jeep's sales slump can be traced back to the significant hike in vehicle prices. In 2015, a Jeep Wrangler would set you back around $35,000 to $38,000. Fast forward to 2023 and the same model with a manual transmission comes with a hefty $52,000 price tag. This sharp increase isn't just due to inflation or supply chain issues. It's a deliberate move by Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares to position Jeep as a luxury brand. Dealers have been given the green light to slap on massive markups, sometimes reaching thousands of dollars. This move further distances the middle-class consumer base that once found Jeep affordable and attractive. However, the luxury brand positioning seems to be backfiring, particularly as Jeep grapples with quality control issues. Recent recalls over fire risks and safety concerns have taken a toll on the brand's reputation. Moreover, the shift towards luxury and performance features in EVs only adds to their already high costs. Take the electric Ford F-150 Lightning, for instance, starting at around $56,000 considerably more than its gas-powered counterpart. This pricing trend isn't exclusive to newcomers like Tesla or Rivian. Even mainstream automakers are slapping premium price tags on their EV models, making it tough for middle-class consumers to make the switch. It's about time brands understand what consumers truly want and stop pricing their cars sky-high while loading them with impractical features that few actually use. As we grapple with these revelations, several daunting questions loom large. If EV production costs are indeed 40% higher than internal combustion vehicles, 
And if these costs can't be passed on to consumers without losing half of the customer base, what does the future hold for electric vehicles? Are we facing a mobility crisis where the middle class is priced out of personal transport? And most concerning, are we headed toward a future where well-intentioned policies to save the planet end up causing more harm than good? The clock is ticking, and the answers to these questions could shape our collective future. Which side are you on in this electric versus ice battle? Let us know in the comments below.